Good evening. After that wonderful soul searching music, I assume your brains are ready for some serious societal talking. We're going to talk about plastics today. You heard about plastics, I'm sure. So let's learn a little bit more deeper into it. So let's begin. Let's take a walk into a supermarket food store. I'm sure all of you have visited one such store. And there's chicken. And what do you look at it? Say, well, how much do I buy? What amounts do I need? But think deeper. There is a plastic tray that holds those chickens. And then there is a packaging film that protects and preserves that chicken. I'm sure you didn't think much about it, except your mouth was watering for what's inside of that package. Let's walk further down and look at that aisle. It's full of products, food products, and other kinds of products. But the commonality in this, all of it has got packaging associated with it. Walk down further. These are the plates and the utensils and the napkins which you need for your party tonight, right? After this show. But that's also in plastics, packaged in plastics. So I can bet you that if you went to any supermarket store in any aisle and found one item or one space which does not have plastics, come see me after the show. So, here is more of the plastic packaging I talked about. And then you wonder, where does all this packaging go? Have you ever wondered about that? It goes into what we call today a landfill. This is a modern invention, a hole in the ground where we bury garbage for posterity. It's a travesty to put all these resources into it, but that's what we do in the economically developed world of ours. On the other side, the emerging economic countries of the world, China, India, Malaysia, Indonesia, name it, they decided, why waste making a landfill? Let's just dump it out. And that is what we term mismanaged plastic waste. And 80% of these land-based waste is what goes into our pristine oceans. I'm sure you have heard about either through print media or your uh, electronic media or your phones, smartphones, that the issues about plastics being found in the oceans. And this is a quick snapshot of the world. Hope you remember your geography, which you learned in school. On the right-hand side, or on your left-hand side, the dark brown shaded areas is the countries of China, of Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. This is the emerging developing countries and five million tons per year of plastics that mismanaged waste picture we saw is leaking into the oceans from that mismanaged country. Mismanaged waste from that country. You go to the lightly brown and you can see US, North America on your right hand side they're also from one to five million tons of plastic waste leaking into the oceans. So, the oceans do not recognize countries' boundaries. What you dump or what leaks out in the Southeast Asian Asian countries ends up in the North American plastic gyre, ends up near Hawaii. So clearly, we need to do some things about it. Indeed, if we did nothing, Think for a minute. If we did nothing, 618 million tons of mismanaged waste 
is going to be formed, and about 200 million tons of this is going to leak into the oceans every year. So by 2025, we're going to have lots of plastics in the ocean. So clearly, we have a problem. And I hope you start to think about this. And the question then comes, what do these plastics do in the oceans? Why is it a problem, right? I mean, that's the question. When a, I'm sure you heard the story of this Boeing liner lost in the oceans, and they couldn't find it for months and years around. So what about a tiny microplastic in the ocean? Should it be a problem? I want you to learn about this. That picture you see is a slide which contains planktons. Planktons are a food source for the other organisms present in the oceans blue dots you see are plastic, microplastics. And it is projected that if we continue to do business as usual, plastics will be in the oceans much greater than plankton, which means the food source for all the ocean ma marine organisms will not be there. So that would create a problem. But more importantly, this is a picture of a microplastic which has been colonized by microorganisms. This is a source of food for the birds and for the fishes. They only see the food which is growing around that plastic. They consume it. That microplastics gets carried up the food chain. It goes into the fishes, it goes into the birds, and where is it going to end up? Unless you are a non-fish-eating person like me, it's going to be in your stomachs at some point or the other. So clearly, we have a problem, and we need to address this problem. So what is the solution to something like this? Say, knee-jerk reaction you can put up and say, let's ban all plastics, right? But this is my first take-home message for you, at least to think about it. Banning plastics is, may create even greater problems than the presence of plastics is going to do. We need to do a different fix on this. Why? Let me take you back to that wonderful chicken, this is a fish, packaged in that nice film carried in a tray. That is preserving and protecting that product. If you did not have it, if it was in the open and hundreds of people had touched it with their hand, felt it, would you buy that? There are some problems then, right? So clearly packaging is necessary to preserve and protect it. All of you have had flu vaccines. Vaccinations are for everyone. Would you get yourself vaccinated with a, with a syringe and a needle, which has been reused many times over? In fact, that was a serious problem in Canada only yesterday's news. So clearly, protection and preservation and hygiene are important attributes that plastics contribute. Of course, your favorite iPhones and, of course, our favorite automobiles, many of them now have plastics. It makes it light. Just think for a minute, if the plastics components are used in place of other materials, that is a 50% weight reduction, which translates to fuel reduction and a better fuel economy. And one more factoid for you to take home. One kilogram of plastic incorporated, or if you reduce the weight of your product by one kilogram, then you are going to reduce 10 kilograms of CO2 being released into the environment and its attributable global warming problems. And what about agriculture? In one of the earlier talks, you heard about food and the fact that population is going to double. How are we going to feed it? Well, plastic culture, 
agriculture films like the one you see, and one you, if you walk on campus you can see, provides the opportunity to double and triple our food growing potential, growing vegetables, growing fruits. They also prevent weed and other kinds of pesticides which can happen. So clearly, plastics is necessary to the well-being and of the environment, but also the well-being of humankind itself. So what can we do? We can't ban plastics. We have a problem with plastics. So in a laboratory like ours, and I'm not saying we are the only ones, but you will permit me to say that we are doing this kind of work. We want to change the nature of plastics. What the problem is, the end of life. What happens to it after use? And what we are doing is, we want to make it compostable. So learn this word. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, but learn it from a different perspective. Compostable and bio-based. Bio-based means I'm going to use plants and biomass to manufacture my plastic products instead of petroleum and oil, and I'm going to design into many of them, which I use as single use, the property of compostability, making it food for the microorganisms present in compost so that it can be removed entirely from the environment. Here's an example. These are products you see. We use sunlight energy. We grow corn. We can grow soybeans. We make a molecule called lactic acid. Now, this is not going to be a lesson in chemistry for you, except that lactic acid is a molecule that you produce when you do anaerobic exercise. So I'm sure you're not going to forget it the next time you feel pain when you do anaerobic exercise. We take this lactic acid molecule and put it together, thousands of them, to create a new polymer molecule, a plastic-like molecule, which has all the attributes and performance of today's products, except it has additional attribute that it is compostable. You're familiar with this drink cup. They're in campus around there. That's made out of PLA. It looks exactly like any other cup, but it is compostable. Bottles. Bottles can be made out of non-compostable plastics. This one happens to be compostable plastic. Agriculture, we talked about, can be made out of compostable or biodegradable in soil like plastics. Carry-out bags, which you get in the store, or the bin liners in your dorms or in venues, they can be a compostable and the food waste can be put for composting. So what I've shown you are examples of changing plastics to meet the end-of-life requirement of compostability. And you may ask, well, is this really real? I mean, do they really disappear? Look at, that's a compost pile. It's right at MSU. You can see the snow behind it. And maybe some of you can recognize the background scene. And this is a bottle, which we saw just earlier in the slide. And you see what happens to it. It's completely gone within the time frames you're seeing there, right? Completely removed from the environment by the microorganisms present in that compost system. The bag with the food waste and all. Put it in a compost pile and you have taken care of the problem. Utensils, have them put them in these bags, put it in a compost pile, they become a part of usable compost. And this is not just a professor talking about it in a lab curiosity. This system, this zero waste using compostable products in conjunction with composting is now being used by the Portland Trailblazers Moda Center. I hope you know who they are the Minnesota Twins, and so clearly there is value in using compostable plastics in venues, in events, and in campuses like Facebook, Google, which is happening, right? So we propose that we have a solution, 
And the question to you as you go back home tonight, food for thought, what are you going to do at MSU? We do have some of these products. So at your event, at your venue, at the Spartan Stadium, let's make all products used outside compostable and make sure all of it is composted so there is zero waste generated which can either leak or go into a landfill. Thank you very much. Thank you.